some claims that are pretty outlandish, but I can back them up. Boom. End of story. <laughs> there is no other crypto out there. So don't get it twisted. If you don't understand where you're parking your money, you're going to pay the consequences for that. And that's just how the cookie crumbles. Boom. We're obliterating everybody. Literally. There is nobody else that comes close to what Hex has done. <laughs> about to get funky. Funkier than you could have ever imagined. You know, Richard Hart is a boss. Hex is literally the best thing on the planet. It's simple mathematics. Good afternoon and good evening, everyone, depending on where you're at. Uh, this is Wells Only, and we got Dr. Dennis Chapman with us today on the uh, special guest segment of uh, Hex, special guest. And uh, long story short, uh, Dr. Chapman is a senior lecturer in project management at uh, Coventry University's School of Strategy and uh, Leadership. I'm going to let you guys... Uh, hear what he has to say about exactly what that means. I'll drop his website in the chat so you guys can read a little bit more yourself about what he's into. Um, but uh, Dr. Chapman, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, as you know, we're here to talk about cryptocurrency, uh, Hex as well, and just uh, have a good general conversation about what's going on in the space and uh, where it came from and hopefully where it's going. Sure, sure. Um and you know those of you on the ch on the comments if uh if you see any lag or i'm having any trouble with the internet connection let me know i can switch over to my secondary if i need to uh, but okay so basically uh my point of view in terms of cryptocurrency what i'm interested in is two main things which is first of all the democratization of money and the empowerment of the individual to have control over their own financial affairs without intervention from any kind of centralized uh, corporation or government. And the second part is um, in terms of what, it, what I call greening the supply chain, which is making sure that mining of cryptocurrency and investing in cryptocurrency can become as environmentally friendly as possible. So in short, those two things are my main interest in cryptocurrency, um, just empowering the people, helping the environment, and also, um, you know, providing economic security for the individual who may not be able to invest, uh, you know, millions of pounds up front. So right. in short, that's my interest. Right. I mean, those are all pretty much uh, kind of the topics or the points that kind of take us to, you know, what allows people to attain financial freedom, um, allow them to figure out what it is that they want to do. Um, and just try to add value in their own way, right? Because if there's one thing that I've discovered um, in my time, just uh, being involved in Hex and, and around people that, you know, do not have to work and can opt to do other things, it seems like depending on the person's character, they ultimately end up getting busier after they have found financial freedom, because what ends up happening is, is that they actually are uh, finding ways to interject themselves into the system to try to affect change. Um, and that's kind of what a lot of us, Hexagon specifically, um, are currently doing uh, in our own unique way. Um, and it's kind of cool to see that because that's not what most people expect um, from a bunch of people right that are coming out of nowhere with newfound wealth and are trying to um just experience life in a lot of ways right um but there's a lot more to it right because a lot of the people that find blockchain and have been around and whatnot um you know it it, it was difficult to even access a bitcoin right at the at the early days um, and I mean, now we're talking about making it green because that's how much demand there is in, in regards to just Bitcoin itself. Um, and, and that just speaks to the to the broad spectrum that we've covered uh, from the beginning of its you know infancy 
uh, from the start of Bitcoin to now, uh, present day. And it's it's things like that, right, that are just like baffling when you, you come across uh, new iterations of cryptocurrencies. Um, and that was kind of the thing that shocked me when I came across X. It was like, wow, well, this is interesting. Um, everybody says ABC123 about it. Is it true? Um, mm. And, you know, that's kind of like the biggest thing about what you see in the space today. Um, and, it, you know, there's thousands of coins, right? Um, and, and a lot of those coins try to profess to have a reason to exist, uh, you know, also known as utility. But uh, in a lot of cases, you know, they kind of missed the point of what the whole reasoning behind cryptocurrency was from the first place, which was, as you said, the democratization of money, uh, which in essence is the people taking control back of what it is that they get paid in or conduct business in or maintain their value in, right? Because when you look at, uh, just look at Turkey, for example, Right. I mean, Turkey's the latest victim of inflationary fiat fiascos. Right. I mean, the Turkish lira went from, I think it was, geez, let me pull up the chart uh, just to use uh, a correct values just because it's been that bad. Um, let's see here. Are, are you speaking about general inflation? Yeah, just general inflation. Yeah. Uh, at yeah, one and point, I think, go ahead, go ahead. No, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of topics to cover, so I just wanted to make sure in case I forget, you know, some of the things <laughs> that you're mentioning. Um, so, so one thing that I wanted to address is there are a, a quite a large number of cryptocurrencies, and there was some, um, there was a media guy interested, and I think he's in the audience at the moment, and he was asking me some questions, and in what he had found in his research is he found that, uh, especially in the UK, uh, which is where I'm based, that the um, population has quite a negative view of all cryptocurrencies in regards to the environment. Mm -hmm. And what is difficult with the media, because the media is oftentimes based on sensationalism, is that people are painting all crypto with the same paintbrush, and they don't realize there's a difference. And I did want to mention, I'm sure some most of you on here have seen this, or if you haven't, you should watch it. There's an interview with Richard Hart himself, the founder of Hex. And I was actually, I watched this today, and I was actually quite encouraged by some of the things that he had to say about Hex in particular, um, which, you know, things like uh, philanthropy, giving money to charity, uh, longevity, um, you know, and just some of the life philosophy of what you mentioned. This is the other thing I wanted to mention, which was that financial freedom allows people to explore you know, because you can take care of yourself, it means you can explore the arts and sciences and all the things that you love to do in life, have have a family um, and not have to worry about providing for yourself. And I think, I think, you know, in a very positive way, cryptocurrency represents the, the, the possibility to do these things. It doesn't mean that everyone is guaranteed to do that no matter what cryptocurrency they get into. You mentioned Bitcoin. And one thing that I remember Richard Hart saying is, and I agree with him on this, is that Bitcoin is kind of like, the aged uh asset <laughs> and hex is kind of like the toddler or rather it's grown up a bit from the toddler stage and you know there's a lot of disadvantages with bitcoin for example in the environment and people need to realize that bitcoin is a very on on environmentally unfriendly cryptocurrency in the way that right. it's mined and you know and and you know large percentages of the energy reserves of the world are being used to mine it because it's reliant on asic technology application specific integrated circuits and for those of you who don't know what that is it it means that basically if you're already a millionaire you can profit from bitcoin mining but if you're not <laughs> good luck <laughs> that's the short of it right <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's the long and short of it. So I'm encouraged by what I've read by X. I am an objective observer. I'm not invested in X. So everything I'm saying now is from an objective point of view, from a research point of view. So, you know, you know, if everyone went out and bought Hex today, I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't profit except for the fact that I've been on a show and that I've been able to speak about it. So, you know, that's my point of view coming in today. I, I really am, um, interested in, in researching crypto from that from the point of view of what I've talked about. So that's what that that's what I hope to be able to provide today in any case, Wales. 
Right, right. Well, what's interesting is that uh, Hex is the greenest crypto that I know of, uh, just from uh, an existence perspective, uh, because everything happens on the blockchain. Um, there is no emission. Uh, hell, the only emission happens from you using your computer, right? And, and, and that's not the case when it comes to most other coins. Uh, and the only reason there is a mission um, is because it's still on Ethereum. Once there is another chain coming out that Richard Hart is working on, I'm not sure if you're aware, it's called Pulse Chain. And that chain is going to be strictly proof of stake. Uh, so even then, we're going to become even greener um, in the sense that, is, that there's not going to be any real energy being used outside of the machines that will be doing their network uh, expansion, right? You, you need machines to run, so you're going to need something to, to run the network, and that's going to be pretty much the expanse of the energy that's going to be used there. It's not going to be to basically create more coins, right, which is the difference. Uh, Pulse Chain is going to basically just have the coins that it has and that's it um there's not going to be any more coins being created that's going to be strictly deflationary so uh everything is going to be based on what actually happens in the network so it's going to be a little different from bitcoin in that perspective um or ethereum because it's not going to need any electrical input in order to generate any coins it's just going to be what do you have Put it on the network in order to secure the network and thank you that's it so well, this is what ethereum has been trying to work its way towards with ethereum 2.0 um hasn't been able to do that um we're basically maybe less than six months away from going live so you know i think uh vitalik has been trying to work on getting to that point since 2015 if not 16. so I think what they didn't anticipate were the technological changes that, you know, when they built Ethereum, everything was one way. And over time, everything changed. And Ethereum didn't really change with it, right, with, with the technological changes that, that we actually had. Um, so it's, it's, they found it difficult to get to the point where they can actually release uh, ETH 2.0, assuming that they are actually trying to do that. Because, uh, I mean, in some circles, people are thinking that they're not actually trying to. Because, um, I mean, if you look at the cost of, of transacting on the Ethereum chain, I mean, it's almost unconscionable. Imagine having to pay a dollar to send an email. I mean, <laughs> would we get any spam email? It would be a different world, right? So, because a lot of business is done that way. So, why can we have all of this spam email and all of this fun stuff that's not fun for us but we can't exercise our right to financial privacy because the cost should be you know an arm and a leg for transaction which is pretty crazy <laughs> well I, th I think that's an important point and you know you know the people who make consistent amounts of big money are the people who charge for transactions so it's when you're the people who are charging per trade. And I think that's an important point. And I think what I find encouraging about Hex is it seems to be built from the ground up to not rip people off. Okay. Right. And I think that that's one of the biggest critics. People say, oh, is this a scam? Is this meant to rip people off? Now, I haven't done enough research that I could give some sort of a final analysis on the show. But what I'd like to say is that, you know, so far from what I've seen, it does seem to be an attempt to say, look, can we create this system whereby there isn't an inherent flaw built in? It's like an operating system. I think everybody might know what operating system I'm referring to. Uh, <laughs> it's a classic operating system that people use, which has flaws built into it, which sells antivirus as part of the package. And I say, as a developer, this is what I say, as a developer, how good is your programming skills when you have to inbuild in the front end a fix that you have to pay for because your operating system is imperfect in the first place because right. it's built to be hacked. And, you know, 
that, that, that's what I think from what I've heard from the interview, the attempt is with Hex is to say, look, this is what we don't want. We don't want flaws from the beginning. We're going to build this from the ground up in order to, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, be secure. So that's really important. Bitcoin, people are losing Bitcoin. It gets hacked. You know, people get their, they, they, you know, Free also work. there's so many scams as well. You know, you everybody yeah. remembers the Elon Musk thing where he was like, oh, people were going on Twitter and they, they took over his account and said, oh, send me this amount of money and you'll get this. I mean, I don't know why anybody. And I'll send two back or whatever the scam is. There's plenty <laughs> of those. Yeah. And, and that's the problem with, with what's going on at the moment with, with Bitcoin, um, not to mention its environmental problems, is, is that you can get scammed even if you legitimately have it. And also, it tends to be the poster child for governments that want to regulate it. So, so I, I think that that's encouraging from what you said. And I think the move to, um, the, the, the move to become gr the greenest cryptocurrency um, I think that's a really great thing. I think that's what we need in the world. You know, that we are in an environmental crisis. So if you can make money and you can do so, and another thing is, is the fact that you're staking for a number of years. So it's like, a, it's like a certificate of deposit. And in the sense that it's actually discouraging you from this kind of day trading mentality where you have this high volatility from day to day, that's how people get scammed. That's how people lose their money. And it was like, you know, again, Richard Hart was mentioning this and he was saying things like, well, it can save you from yourself. You know, if you, when you're when you can just buy and sell at a whim, you, you might sell for, OK, I've doubled my money. That's it. You get out. But then what happens five months from now? It's like you could have quadrupled or more. And so that's the whole point. And it encourages you to keep the money that there's a kind of there is a 40 percent interest. That's um, part of that I I heard as well. But then, of course, that increases as the price of hex goes up. So 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 far, I'm, I'm, I know that there are always going to be criticisms and you know, it's important to have those criticisms. It's not just all on the upside. We have to be aware of risks. But this is one thing I'll say, and then I'll let you take back over, Wales. Uh, one thing that people don't remember when they say, oh, isn't it risky? They say, okay, <laughs> right. How can you make money without taking a risk? How can you be an entrepreneur without taking a risk? It's right. impossible. Oh, I want free money without taking any risk. I right. want all the upside, but none of the downside. It's a risk. <laughs> What? You got to choose your risk carefully. You got to say, okay, what am I right. going to do? Here's the upside. Here's the downside. Here's this financial instrument. Here's this one. Here's my taxes. Let's get everything together. The more organized you are, that's where the project management comes in. That's why having a solid project management framework behind what you do is so important. Um, you know, planning. You know, um, plan, fail to plan, plan to fail. It, it's that right. mentality where you have to do your homework. You have to make intelligent decisions. Here's the instruments. Hex is an instrument. Is this an instrument that you can use? Is this an instrument that you want to risk? Do your research. Find out if that's something for you. Same for any cryptocurrency. So yeah, that that that's my point of view. Anyway, I'll let you take back over, Wales. <laughs> no, I mean you made so many valid points. You could have kept going because I mean, you know, it, it it's all about being objective, right? Um, and I think that the biggest issue the cryptocurrency present uh, space presently has is a lack thereof um and this is i mean i look I, i've been around since the early days i found bitcoin in 2000 i found out about bitcoin in 2009 was actually overseas uh working for the u.s government in a contractor position and i couldn't do anything from over there so i had to wait to get back to the u.s before i could actually do anything so i get back and i start playing and all that stuff so i was one of those early guys but I sold out because I thought I was being smart, right? I didn't understand the big picture. Um, so after a while, I realized that I really messed up um, and I made it my life's work to find that next trade, um, you know, a Bitcoin type trade, because that's been a 6 million percent uh, trade. I mean, that trade was better than the big short, right? And, and there's Wall Street movies about the big short. Right. And the big short was when um, you had those traders on Wall Street make money off of subprime mortgage derivatives in 2008. For those viewers that might not be familiar. Um, but long story short, um, the whole objective of, you know, investing is to multiply your capital. Right. It's to, to get returns on your capital. Um, and I think that the fact that Hex is specifically designed for that um is what attracts is what's going to attract most people to it 
right? Uh, a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of coins out there that profess to be about a lot of things. But when you look at what's under the hood, you happen to discover that there's nothing there. Um, and that kind of puts you at a pause because it's like, well, how is this supposed to actually do anything, right? Or be of interest or anything like that? Um, you know, where is the demand going to come from, basically? Because <laughs> if it professes to do something and it doesn't do it, well, what's the point? Um, there is none, right? Uh, so, and that's the whole thing. When we look at the retirement landscape, we look at the investment landscape, you know, and this is globally. Because um, what I've done for the past, ever since I've graduated from college, is just focus on capital markets and work on the retirement side of the industry and, and work in capital markets and, and just work on Wall Street, basically. And um, long story short, the average person, whether employed or not, is not ready for retirement. You know, they have to work pretty much even after they start getting their Social Security check or whatever the case is. Um, and that's just pretty much the broad case for the average person. Um, today right and when you sit there and you think about that you know you have to ask yourself well how can anybody get out of that hole right because for most people right uh, you know if if they don't even have a good job such as you and i i work on wall street because i have a degree uh you're a, a senior lecturer you have i'm presuming a phd of sorts or two right so you have higher education there's a lot of people out here don't even have a bachelor's degree in, in communications, right? Like almost the lowest form of getting some type of higher education. And that sets people back in a lot of ways in terms of their income, assuming they don't know how to get money on side hustles or multiple streams of income or being able to create multiple streams of income. There are people that are good at that. Um, and Hex kind of gives you a, a solution for that, right? It gives you a life, uh, a, a, a life hack for trying to find that additional revenue source that you need to survive. And um, I guess the cool thing about it is that you don't have to deal with people, right? The only people you have to deal with are those that you actually need to garner information from if you don't understand something. Um, like, for example, when I first found Hex, I, I didn't find, find Hex. I didn't understand it entirely. So I started trying to find people in the community that I could ask questions to um, and try to understand exactly uh, the new terminology, like what is staking. I don't know what that is. I know what buying a fixed income product is, but I don't know what staking is. But that's almost one and the same uh, when you get to the end result. So it's all of those different those differences that kind of put people on pause with new things, right? So instead of taking the time to learn, uh, they take the time to not engage, which is contrary to what they should be doing, uh, because that's how you really get to that next level in life, regardless of what you're doing. Um, and that's just, you know, in general, right? I don't think that uh, you need to to speak about doing things to get better all the time, to focus on that as a topic. I think that that's just something that's always topical. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that is, is because, you know, we're all students at one point until we become teachers to a certain extent. Um, and you yourself have found yourself in that very same position, right? Cause that's basically what you do. Um, so <clears throat> that's yeah. all to say that when you find something like Hex, um, you know, where do you go next, right? Because yeah, I mean, go ahead. I, you, you, you've raised a lot of good points there. And again, you know, we can, uh, I just wanted to make sure, uh, sorry to interrupt, I just wanted to make sure in case I forget um, some of the things that you've been mentioning. And here I'm hearing a lot of life philosophy things. And I think that's encouraging as well with the community. And, and I think from what I've, it, again, I'm very new to this, but from what I've seen of the community, people are very positive and very supportive. Um, but I did want to say that it's, you know, it's not an elitist thing. You don't have to have a formal education to make it in life. I mean, look at Bill Gates. He dropped out of college um, and to start to found Microsoft. 
and you know whatever you have might have to say about the company or the way he operates uh, all of those things is a separate issue but the fact is is that no no it's not an elitist thing you don't have to necessarily get a formal education but what you do have to do is educate yourself and have the tools to liberate yourself from some of the negative thinking that you might have about your potential so i'm sure many of you out there who may not have a formal education may have been put down by those who say oh well you don't have a college degree i can't hire you you don't have a college degree you you won't make it here mm -hmm. but you know what investment banking is one of the most profitable industries and you can go for a job interview with investment banking and not have a college degree and if they see that you've got the acumen and you've got the instincts you can you can start that job i mean i'm not saying everyone should go into investment banking but what i'm saying is is that exactly. that has to do with finances you know you you know with something like it's about instruments it's about believing in yourself but not doing things blindly you know right. you have to believe in yourself but you also have to do the work the internet is out there wikipedia is out there you can learn almost anything from wikipedia and correct. it's relatively objective it really is because it's community it's community powered which is what this hex seems to be it seems to be a more very community powered open transparent financial instrument that transparency is so incredibly important when you're dealing with investing but it's like anything look you you don't have to put all your eggs in one basket something like hex right. is something you can say you know i've got a few hundred dollars a few hundred pounds or quid as we say here in this country right it can be your high risk investment you can have other investments that are lower risk. It can be part of your portfolio. Again, project management. You have a portfolio, portfolio management. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so so it's one of those things where here's another instrument. You don't have to put all your eggs in one basket. You shouldn't do that anyway with anything in life. You know, you, you should diversify. Like you said, multiple streams of income. But all those concepts, you can read books. You can, you know, a lot of people give away this information. Like we're doing today, this is all free information. Everyone here, we didn't charge for this. You can just Correct. sign up and get this information. Mm -hmm. So... So that's 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 about community building. It's about believing in yourself, self education, going on those resources. The internet really is a great thing for that, and open source communities, transparency. Those are all important concepts, and they are connected to Hex from what I've seen so far. In terms of my research, of course, as I said, I have a lot more to do. I'm relatively new to this, but so far, what I'm seeing is encouraging from the community point of view. Yeah, I gotta tell you, uh, I'm naturally introverted, and what's motivated me to leave that, I guess, aside for a little bit, at least when I do these streams, um, is the simple fact that everybody is willing to learn, willing to educate themselves to a certain degree. Um, and if not everybody, right, some people are interested, and that is enough because it's more than a couple. Um, but long story short, <clears throat> Uh, this community is very positive, it's very supportive, it's very uh, half glass full, right? That's the perspective of the majority of people in this community. They like to get things done. Uh, they like to take action, right? And, and I think that that's the kind of thing that some people, like for me personally, it's kind of been a very positive experience uh, because I was only intent on just doing one video to explain to people like what cryptocurrencies are from a mathematical point of view. Uh, and that's it. You know, I didn't do anything else. I had no other intentions or anything like that. Um, and a year later, I don't know, I must have done at least 80 videos by now. I mean, I got a whole you know, book of work now uh, and that anybody can learn anything from. And I had no intention of being an educator, but this is what I do now. Right. People ask me questions. I answer them. Um, and that's it, because I always come with the factual information. I'm not just selling something. Um, and, and that's what allowed me to to actually do anything in regards to the community with respect to Hex, because I'm a data guy. Uh, my degree is in mathematics. I have a minor in finance and economics. And so my whole life has revolved around looking at information and distilling it. So what I did with Hex was Number one, we all know there is no yield anywhere. Right. Oh, just just really quick, somebody Go wrote uh, can't learn about Richard Hart from Wikipedia. Well, then write the article. Uh, you can't write an article about yourself, so that's the one rule of Wikipedia. So he can't go on and write. Oh, I'm Richard. <laughs> so so go. That, that's what I mean. And tell somebody writes that article. This that's why this is so new. 
Right. And, you know, people are already new. Some people are like, what's Bitcoin? You know, what is that? And they're already 10 years behind or more. Than oh, yeah. Years. It's crazy, right? So so it's really, this is a very new thing. It's like in the 90s and people were talking about the interweb or whatever. You know, uh, you know, you, you know, when something's very new, it's not going to be in the mainstream. And we are all now developing it. Researchers, you know, professionals such as yourself, Wales, who have, you know, who are in the financial sector, um, you know, as academics and the people who are actually investing, the community. And this this is how evolution happens. It's called emergence theory. And right now, this is an emergence. Our whole conversation right now is an emergence. Right. The discoveries that people are having, the questions, the criticism, everything, it's an emergence. And, you know, we'll have to see how things go. But at the same time, it's just great to be a part of, of something that that is bigger than ourselves. And there's lots of things like that in our lives. Um, that we can find and to some people that's family that's something bigger than yourself um and you know and you know so the whole idea with cryptocurrencies in general as i said the positives are in a general way although there are exceptions with certain cryptocurrencies which are dirtier than others which is just that it does represent a democratization and it represents a kind of libertarian uh way of running your life something that's more independent something that you have more control over now that doesn't mean you're going to always succeed. It doesn't mean that every financial, every cryptocurrency is going to succeed by no means. And it depends, right. you know, don't, don't buy high. No. Yeah. Don't buy high and sell low. You know I mean? Come on. These are very right. basic things. Uh, you know, and you have to have that basic acumen. So yeah, I would never recommend somebody invest who doesn't know anything. Like you should definitely do your research and know what you're doing, but the, the information is out there. And if it's not, and you know something, Go write that Wikipedia article. Go do it. Wikipedia is open to that. Right. You can do that. Just use factual information and you can be that person who writes that article. So go and do that. Anyway, I wanted to address that because somebody had that question. <laughs> no, yeah, that's cool. I mean, that's kind of annoying, but uh, yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, I, look, I, the only thing I use Wikipedia for is resources. Like I'll go there and I'll scroll all the way to the bottom. That's it. Like that's all I use Wikipedia for because that's yeah. that's what you want anyway. Right. You don't really want uh, what somebody else wrote. You want the source of information where they got their information from in the first place. You want the reference material. You want that actual source of information, not the third party information. Um, and that's why Hex is so different. Right. Like uh, a lot of other purveyors of cryptocurrency don't have the level of blockchain data that we have. Right. We have multiple fronts of information. You got hex.vision, hexdailystats.com, you got etherscan.io, you got all these fronts that you could reference for blockchain data, right? And we can ascertain exactly what's happening on the blockchain just by going to those places and pulling the data and analyzing. Like, that's what I do. That's been my basically what I've been doing since I started uh, doing things in the community. I'm the person that says, hey, this is what's going on in the blockchain. I got, I'm, I have like a deck of like 30 charts. People thought I had a PhD just because I made charts. Like, no, no, no. Anybody could make charts. It's not just people with PhDs <laughs> because people just aren't used to that, right? People aren't used to that. Uh, they're used to people with higher education, I guess, making charts, but that's not the way it works. Uh, and, and, and that's just it, right? You have to be able to verify the information, right? No matter where it comes from. Um, and that's been one big, one of my biggest messages uh, personally, uh, because, you know, when you look at the crypto space now, I mean, we call it the promise coin space over here because the majority of the coins are just copies of themselves and they promise to do A, B, C, one, two, three with no intention of ever meeting any goal. Um, and it's sad because this is an opportunity that we can actually give ourselves to find a way to democratize the way we maintain our value because mm -hmm. why should we restrict ourselves to dealing with turkish type inflation i mean and this is kind of how we started the conversation and it went down this road right yeah i mean how do we protect ourselves when the zombie apocalypse comes but uh yeah. <laughs> there's no currency for that but you know and um you know so you know that i know that's a bit tongue-in-cheek but yeah, yeah, yeah you're you're absolutely right and, and yeah it, your point about charts yeah just go on excel it's not actually that hard and it's and not it is important to understand correlation versus causation this may sound like ooh, this is over my head but i'm telling you people who have higher degrees sometimes don't quite don't get, get the it, idea yeah. of correlation versus causation but one thing i wanted to mention is vision 
So again, project management, vision is so important. It's not just project management, it's entrepreneurship. If you're going to invest in something, yes, like you said, some people are creating these false coins or these kind of faux coins. They're not listed on any exchange and people get hyped up about it and they think they're, you know, and it's fraudulent. There, there were some lots of examples of this that have happened. So there are basic things you want to make sure that there's certain legitimacies in place that, you know, show you that, okay, this is a real thing. This isn't just a scam. Uh, people are trading this. There are actually centralized platforms that are allowing you to do this you have to have a wallet there's a lot of technical detail that not too hard but there is technical details like you have to have a wallet you have to know about your taxes and and as i it, you know the next video after that interview was a video where there was an actual tax professional on and he was explaining about like you know anytime you sell bitcoin or trade bitcoin you know you have to pay taxes on that gain uh, even if you're trading it for another cryptocurrency so you have to have knowledge about how to take care of your own and that's mm -hmm. so important to self-empower and you have to have instruments to do that. But Hex does have a vision, and I've seen that vision. I've seen that there is legitimacy because there are legitimate platforms that allow you to trade. And um, you know, because of those two things, that's a foundation. And then you make a decision based on that in terms of how much risk you want to take. Again, I try to break things down into a more simplified, fundamental fashion. There's a lot of technical details about the blockchain that are also important, I think, for people to understand. Maybe you can explain more about that, Wales, about, you know, what is, the, you know, people who don't already know, like, what is a blockchain? Why is a blockchain? Uh, what is what does it all mean? <laughs> how would you yeah, answer that yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's an important question, I think, because I think that the blockchain is going to give us and by us, I mean, we, the people, <laughs> a lot of leverage moving forward because it's literally just a database on where we can record transactions. So, for example, uh, say you had some business that you wanted to run and you wanted to incorporate blockchain as a tool. It doesn't just have to run off a coin. It could just literally be a ledger where you use something to tabulate information. And that's it. Right. It's really just a place where you can record information and give things value or not. That's it. It's just like a database. Literally, that, that's all it is. Um, so the, the key thing about this database is that it allows us to record information uh, infinitely. Right. If it's built right. Because look at Bitcoin has been running for 13 years. It's had some hiccups, of course, but. It has still been operational for 13 years. Uh, Ethereum has been operational since 2014 um, and so on and so forth. Right. All the ones that have come after um, and all of them have their unique purposes or functionalities. And all they're doing is recording transactions. So over time, that has yielded whatever result was supposed to be yielded from that action. Right. So if you make a blockchain or a cryptocurrency to serve a specific purpose, then that administrative purpose can be served. Um, it's just about what you foresee in your head and what you can code up. Um, and the whole purpose of Hex is essentially to give the little guy a fighting chance at retirement, at a financial future, uh, because the little guy isn't going to make it on $20 an hour and a 401k assuming they even have that um so you know and then the issue then became that uh, ethereum became unusable that blockchain itself because the ethereum blockchain uh was the place where um the web 3 as they call it was supposed to flourish but it actually went there to die because the cost of doing anything there is absorbent you know you can't do anything on ethereum it costs you you know just 10 bucks just to look at anything on there it's, it's kind of crazy so what's happening now is that richard hart is building is forking ethereum forking bsc he's uh taking uh what we call the centralized exchanges and forking a couple of those splicing them um and he's basically recreating a whole new crypto ecosystem that's going to allow people, the average person, to engage and maybe trying to attain some financial freedom. Um, you know, and this has been a problem for, I want to say, at least a year already, the Ethereum gas fees. Because, I mean, imagine just paying $30 to do a simple monetary transaction. Like just sending money mm -hmm. from yourself 
to your a family member or just to me or just to whoever. I mean, it should not cost thirty dollars to send money. <laughs> it's crazy. No. no, and I mean, I mean, there's things like PayPal and stuff like that, and right. you know, which, which actually have represented a very good step forward. I mean, and Elon Musk. I mean, this is how he got his start, isn't it? And that allowed him to get this seed money. So you know, like it's so important to always look up to always look at building your next venture and to do something so you don't just make money for the sake of making money for the sake of making money you know money is an instrument in itself as well and you know giving access to the everyday person and i don't think it's that the, all the rich people out there are the smartest and all the people who don't have money are the, the dumbest people that's not how so it's right. worked it, it's because the system has been in many ways very biased at maintaining the status quo so that the person who's the little guy, as you call them, making the twenty dollars per hour, the four hundred one k, that probably won't be there. And you're right, um, you know, you don't have a chance. No matter how clever you are, the system is built with these high transaction fees. So transaction yeah. costs price out the average person. Correct. So what? So that's that's why it's so important to at least entertain the idea of these kinds of things because we need to have democratizing influences in the financial markets which allow people to have to be able to support themselves at a reasonable level not only to enjoy their lives but to be able to be entrepreneurs so that they can make money and then give money to charity and give money to cancer right. research give money to heart disease research all of those things and we have all of these people who are flourishing but we can't do that by keeping just the same people in the same places doing the same things. So we need these instruments to liberate people. And that's what's so encouraging about it. Right, right, right. And, and that's kind of, you know, I, like my role within the community has kind of been to provide people with a lot of this financial information that, you know, they just can't find anywhere else because it's not meant for it to be found because I've worked on Wall Street for so long, there's just certain things I'm gonna know that you can't even think about Googling, right? Like uh, how rich people never sell assets, right? Rich people live off of their assets. They don't sell them. They, they, they live off of them as collateral and their assets keep gaining in value. And what ends up happening is, is that that value gain pays off whatever they borrowed to live off of and then they continue living nothing no 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 love lost they just keep living like you know that's what rich people do they keep living off of the wealth of their asset because it is an asset not just a speculative asset but just an asset right because once something is worth enough the connotation of that word changes a little bit right and and that's what's kind of interesting but also dangerous because it creates a lot of people in society that just don't have value as well um, but then they have all of this monetary ammunition that they can just throw out there to do whatever. So I think that the line has to be drawn just with respect to principles, right? Because I think that, you know, as we all have seen in our lifetimes, you know, money doesn't buy you class, right? It doesn't buy you uh, the ability to be a gentleman, gentlewoman. It just buys you things. That's it. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean anything. <laughs> um, so, you know, I think if if we could find a way to direct society's uh, ideals back to where they should be, say in maybe self-improvement instead of worrying about what the next person has or doesn't have, uh, it's probably a good first step. Um, but, you know, as you noted earlier, media is very, uh, very mm, piranha-like. So once they get uh, <laughs> their teeth into the story or into a narrative, it's almost impossible for them to let it go. So that's also a battle, right, that you kind of have to fight. Um, it's, and that's just being a tight-knit community. And that's difficult in a, in a big city environment, for example, um, because if you live in a city, odds are you probably live in um, – in an apartment building of some sorts, right? Or or a place where people just typically are not uh, open, right? Like they're introverted. So it makes it a little more difficult. Um, so, it, you know, there's a lot of challenges with respect to how to improve what can be done about how things are done, mm -hmm. right? Which is, a, which is a big conversation all in itself. Um, because cryptocurrency only solves one problem. 
right? Then it comes, well, what about everything else? Because once you have the money, well, what's next? Yeah, I mean, when you, when you have cash, just picking up on that, when you have cash, the government prints money and lowers the value of your cash. That's what they do in times of crisis. They print money and that creates inflation, which eventually can lead to runaway inflation or even in worst case scenarios, capital flight. Um, and that, but with, with, with Hex in particular, I know that in a way you're printing your own money, if that makes sense. So that's kind of what Correct. I understood. Yep. So you have, at least you have that kind of control. Yes, it's a risk everything's a risk. I'm not even encouraging people to invest. I'm just trying to give the information as I see it. And as I've read so far, I'm not saying, oh, I suggest you do this. But what I am trying to do is to provide that point of view to just say that, you know, look, do we actually have capitalism? Do we actually have a free market? It's so funny when people say, oh, well, I don't want communism. I don't want socialism. And it's like, right. yeah, um, you're, right. Uh, and, and it's interesting how we are already in a situation where we don't have the free market it's not there it, but 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 with cryptocurrencies represent a point where actually it equals the playing field so that it's not already like at least you have a chance it feels like and um you know and, and there's a lot of great things about the free market competition is so important in the free mm -hmm, market mm -hmm. but we don't have real competition because you know businesses are too big to fail the government subsidizes if you're if you want to really make it and get government subsidies become a big failing business you know yeah. be a big failing airline or or train company or energy company that's terrible at efficiency you can get <laughs> loads of government handouts then that's the way to oh, really yeah. make it, yeah. a failing business. that's the ticket out of poverty for sure <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you are not lying there, sir. That's definitely the, the quick ticket out. That's definitely the overnight success ticket. For those of you out there looking for that lottery <laughs> ticket, doctor just gave it to you. So Yeah, so in, in that, and you know, look at the energy companies that are failing, at least in the UK. I think the same thing may be happening in America, but energy prices are going through the roof right now. Yep. And and the companies that are failing are the SMEs, the small medium Correct. enterprises that were same providing an here. alternative. No one's bailing them out. And nope. it's really unfortunate. And so everyone get rich, start your own businesses that are demo that democratize things and make a lot of money that way. And you make the world a better place. You know, you, you can get rich, make the world a better place. And, and, and that's, that's really what you can do. But, but of course there's a lot of risk, but that's the way entrepreneurship is. I keep mentioning risk because everyone should keep that in mind. Um, and when you're doing anything, but vision is important and also understanding that, there is that the companies out there that already exist are doing such a bad job that if you have a vision and you want to make the world a better place, there's not much competition out there in a sense. They're already doing a bad job, you see. So the, you can make it in this world, but you need to think differently. No, don't think like the businesses that, you know, we're going to do a really bad job and become inefficient and get government handouts. That's not the way to think. You know, think about right. being innovative, saving energy giving people a really good deal people will know word of mouth community makes a big difference word of That's mouth right. travels faster than any type of advertising if you become a small Correct. medium enterprise and you're providing value people will talk to each other and you you will make it that's what that's, that's right. what the strategy should be and you know getting in you know having cryptocurrency as a payment option or being involved in cryptocurrency will allow more flexibility in payments why not i mean um there there there's advantages to that 100 percent Hundred percent, and you know there are some businesses that take Hex uh, as payment, um, but interestingly enough, Hex is not designed for that functionality, um, and is designed to be a store of value, uh, which is unique, um, because most coins want to tout that they do other things. Uh, you know, we all know they don't do anything, but um, Hex is designed to be a store of value, and with respect to that, it has a mechanism that accounts for that value. Mm -hmm. um, and that mechanism is called a T-share. A T-share rate is how the system essentially keeps in line the valuation uh, on both the front end and the back end. So the front end on what you can get from the system in terms of a payout and on the back end in terms of what you can get once you end a stake and get back in. Because the T-share rate it changes over time and the way it changes is that it changes in line with the highest gain in the system as time passes so once the system picks up a pretty outsized gain 
that means it knows it's time for the system to recalibrate higher. And it's just a math solution. It's just a math equation. And that's how the system actually maintains its value. So it's by actually what happens in the system. And the system is designed to last like 150 years. 154, if I'm correctly, some weird number like that. So, you know, when you sit there and you and you can sit down and look at this in the code itself. Um, so when you sit down and you look at all these facets of how the system is designed and how it's designed to work. So, how, you know, this this code block also is some of the most secure code. The consensus code itself is locked away. So it can't even be touched by anything else going on in the Ethereum blockchain. So if something happens on Ethereum, it can't even be hacked. Like nothing can happen to it. Um, so what that means is that the only way something that could adversely affect the price that could happen in hex is if somebody's wallet gets hacked, which does happen. So <clears throat> that's really the biggest weakness in terms of security that exists on the hex network. Um, and, and, and these are the kind of things that, you know, most people don't really even think about. Right. And it's interesting because I'm going through a process now where I have to disclose all of the risk factors that exist for Hex. So by default, I've become one of the foremost experts with respect to risk and Hex and, and security and blockchain and whatever facet you want to name it. Um, and, you know, the funny the and most interesting thing is, is that there is no other system out there outside of Microsoft Paint that has 100% uptime and has ever just like not worked, right? Hex is one of the few that has always been running since it's been launched. Microsoft Paint is the only other one that we've been able to come up with as a community. We can't come up with anything else. So, uh, you know, imagine once the world gets used to crypto and they realize that it's just software because that's the biggest thing about crypto that that kind of throws people off it's really just software um and if it's well written well written software you're gonna win that simple um and the way you figure that out is by reading it you know and understanding the game plan the game theory and does the logic coincide with the math and the code and if the answer to all of those things are yes, well, then you have a winner. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the math has to coincide with the logic. There's no two ways about it. Yeah. And I mean, we're, you know, it almost seems like it's inevitable. Everything's becoming digital anyway with the right. metaverse and everything else. And I think it's important to change our whole mentality and to understand our options in regards to that. And you're right. It is just code and well-written code does last. And in fact, the internet is still based on something like 60% legacy code. I mean, um, written in the 1980s, uh, you know, so, and, and that's, that was because it was well-written. We have so much bloatware now because computers have gotten faster. So programming has gotten lazy, mm -hmm. um, you know, but I think you're right. I think, I think the technical term is that it's, the code for Ethereum is in a de demilitarized zone, I guess is what you would say. Right. Yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's in that it, it, it can't be kind of like, if you can't actually get to it, it, unless you go there in person, it'd be like a James Bond movie or something. Right. You're breaking into the actual building. Um, but the code is it's immutable. You know, in this sort Correct. of thing, and, and that's and that's because it that's because from the ground up, it's built to be, yeah. Oh, and one other thing you were saying, like with text, you're right. It isn't meant to just be traded day to day, and and I think any financial instrument that encourages you to hold, that encourages you to be patient, that encourages you to think long term, and I think this goes for any kind of business modeling anyway. Long term thinking is so important. You can't, you know, get rich sch quick schemes. If you want to get rich quick. Oh, I'm going to buy Hex and tomorrow I'm going to be a millionaire. Okay, there was a space in a year's time where that could have been the case. Actually, some people right. got very lucky. Million percentage interest. Oh, my God. If I could go in a time machine. But right. they don't exist. <laughs> Such opportunities are always there in the present. You know, people are born today. People are 15 today. People are young at that age and making huge gains because they recognize the opportunities that exist now. So you can't right. lament about the past. But thinking long term is always a good idea. And I think with a financial instrument that encourages that and rewards you for that and uh, is in the digital sphere, I think that's a that deserves a an investigation. Certainly.
Right, and, and, and that's important, right? Because, I mean, if this is one thing I've learned from getting into the streaming game is that the world has changed a whole lot. Because people are seeking education from a person such as myself, because I've learned from the school of hard knocks, so I have practical knowledge to share. And it's valuable to people because they can then go forward and apply it, right, after they make their own assessment, of course, because everything that I've gone through isn't applicable to everybody. But in some ways, they can take what works and discard what does not. And that's the kind of world we live in now, right? I can go learn whatever I want from anybody. If you want to start a channel on project management in the way you want to teach it because you don't agree with something that the school is forcing you to do, done. Like, that's the world we live in. Um, and that's kind of the type of education I've been giving on my channel is for people to understand that the winning game is the do nothing and sit on your hands game. I, we even have like a whole little theme song that you'll hear on the way out. Um, <laughs> that that That's the chant. That's the mantra. <laughs> Everybody told you, do nothing. Just stake it. Just do nothing. Because when you expose yourself to that intermediate volatility, it's going to force you to act. You know, it's going to force you to do things you don't want to do. Um, it's just going to force you, right? And, and you should never make any monetary move out of emotion right it should all be calculated it should all be well thought out in advance and if you know your targets are hit then you do what you got to do if not then you do nothing um that's how it should be but we all know uh, especially if i used to trade futures for a long time <clears throat> and i'll tell you firsthand that's not how it is right it's very few people that have the actual discipline to respect their pocket as i like to say um, and what that means is that you're just not going out there and really just burning money, right? Throwing it in the coal fire, as I, as I like to say. Because uh, that's what happens when you're engaging in short-term uh, trading in a lot of ways. Um, because you don't realize that the kind of risk you're taking is, um, you know, like, for example, you're jumping into a river and you're trying to swim against the current. But it's a strong current river. So what you're doing is swimming the wrong way, right? And that's <clears throat> ultimately what trading is on a short-term basis for a lot of people because they choose the wrong side because they think they see something that isn't there. Mm -hmm. And that's just yeah. the nature of the beast. Yeah, I mean, I guess we're getting towards the close. So one last thing to say, and I wanted to pick up, sure. you're making some very apt comments, Wales, very important comments as well. And emotion is the worst thing you can use for trading. Two, there are two mechanisms in the market, and I'm sure you'll agree with me on this, fear and greed. And 100%. if you're trading on one or both of those, you will lose. Fear and greed are very bad ways to do trading and investing. So, yeah, that, that's kind of my last word, I suppose, unless there's any other subjects that come in. But you're making some great points, Wes. No, I mean, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting to see how you've been able to garner kind of all of the information you really needed in regards to understanding Hex without even having to talk to me. Like, we really haven't even talked about Hex. You know, we really haven't. But you have a pretty solid understanding of it. Um, I'd say the only thing would be to get a better understanding of how T-shares work. Um, because that's the key. They even have a value in, in, in our market, in our internal market, they have a value because they provide the yield. That's what pays you because uh, there is a thing called the T-share payout. So that's the thing you want to look into. How does that work? How does that interact? And, and you should also know, which we didn't get to touch on, is that this is the only decorrelated asset that I've ever come across. It's not correlated to anything in the crypto space. It's not correlated to S&P ETF. It's not correlated to NASDAQ ETF. It's not correlated to gold, crude, nothing. So you keep uh, keep looking in the hex. Um, and hopefully we can do this again when you have some time. It was a pleasure. Uh, and <clears throat> we can get hopefully a little more in depth. Uh, and thank you guys for tuning in. And we're going to go on ahead and hear that classical song now. That tells people how easy it is to get rich. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Wes. Right? The reality is, is that 
I want to be rich as fuck. There's only one way to be rich as fuck. That's by sitting on your ass the longest. Yep. That's it. Yep. That's the secret. The God well told you. Richard done told you. I done told you. Kareem done told you. Maddie done told you. Everybody done told you. Everybody done told you. These motherfuckers still acting like they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Yo, everybody said it. I mean, hey, you know what it is, man. Everybody that told you. 